Five months ago, I arrived in New Zealand. Looking back on my times traveling, exploring, diving, spearfishing, cooking, and feeding new friends, it makes me appreciate all the ocean has given us, and especially what it has given me. The ocean gives me a true sense of adventure, something that is lost in our modern everyday life. You know what's around the next bend in the road because your GPS tells you. But to visit a completely different world, even if for only as long as I can hold my breath, that feeds my soul. And when I return to the surface for a breath of air, I have something that feeds my body. When I am blessed with these opportunities for food, I am then selectively harvesting that species, sustainably leaving the rest without bycatch. That food I bring home, I know exactly where it came from. I know exactly what I'm putting into my body. The variety of seafood I take home, yellowtail kingfish, scallops, lobster, and snapper, there's no way I could afford to eat like this except to go out and get it for myself. And the whole process is extremely rewarding. So this is what I do, and this is why I do it. I love capturing these moments on film, sometimes more than pulling the trigger. I love being able to relive these moments, and if I can, share them with the rest of the world. These are my stories of spearfishing New Zealand. In late April, after three days of camping and spearfishing on the tip of the Coromandel, I headed down the peninsula to rest and recuperate at Hotwater Beach, a natural hot spring that fed through the beach beside the ocean. I found a shovel and took a rinse in the ocean. Then dug a tub and relaxed. Until I got bored and went and played in the waves. The next day, I headed down the coast along the Bay of Plenty, arriving in Khao Rao, where I met and stayed with Bradley Lang, an avid outdoorsman who immediately took me out to show me the local stag hunting scene. Early the next morning, we prepared the boat and our gear, then headed to the launch at Pukatani. The journey from Pukatani to White Island took us past the Motohora Island Sanctuary out into rougher open water. But after two hours, we were finally there. The steep craters, white smoke, was an intimidating sight. We decided to start off on the south end of the island, and on my very first dive, there was a good-sized bronze whaler shark waiting for me. Undeterred, I took a longer drop to get a feel for the area. Most of the fish around me were small, except for the bronzy. P. 
pink mau mau are delicious white fish that usually keep good distance, but these were a little too dumb for me to want to pull the trigger. even found a bold scorpion fish amongst the rocks. Once out in deeper water, I used a school of blue mau mau as cover to get closer to the bigger kingies, whose curiosity brought them into range. Kingy flared his gills and thrashed. While filming and fighting, I chose to direct my fish into the shallower, weedy water, risking him tangling in the weeds but avoiding the ever lurking taxman. Eventually he tangled, but in only 10 meters 33 feet of water, it would be an easy retrieve. Clouds of blue Mau Mau enveloped the struggling fish, hoping for an easy meal. After dislodging him, the fight was back on. Exhausted, I was able to bring him in and work my way back to the boat while watching out for that bronze whaler or any other sharks. Once back in the water, there was the bronze whaler, which I was too focused on to notice my dive knife falling right past my face. And he didn't even stick around. Checking a few other areas, we were only seeing rat kingies. Motoring over to a very deep pinnacle, we found smaller kingfish at the surface. But, dropping down to 25 meters or 80 feet, hanging off the very end of my float line, I was seeing 20 kilos or 45 pounders. They were just out of reach. Patiently waiting for my opportunity to pull the trigger, I was running out of breath. The float line at the surface moved with a passing wave, jerking the line and my gun. And it was a long swim back up. Deep from the dive, I spotted Bradley who was smoothly and calmly taking his time underwater. In 
no time, he speared a nice sized kingfish. While he was fighting it at the surface, I dove down to put in a secondary safety shot. Bradley had placed an excellent holding shot. Now it was free to film this awesome fight. When speared, kingfish tend to swim in a circular direction around the person. Here, Bradley does a great job of moving with the fish while pulling it in. Locking his legs, Bradley secures the fish before delivering the final blow, humanely dispatching the fish. After Bradley's stonker of a fish weighing just under 20 kilos or 45 pounds, we started to head home for the day. About halfway back, we stopped over a massive school of anchovies being hailed by seabirds, hundreds of thousands being pushed to the surface by predators below. Hoping for a chance at some large game fish, but only found small skipjack tuna darting past. Bradley said he had not seen anchovies like this in 10 years, due largely to skipjack and yellowfin tuna overfishing. Perhaps this was a sign. It was an incredible experience being surrounded by so much life that reacted to my every move. Once the skipjack tuna below were gone, the whole school would form a column that would twist down into the depth. White Island proved to be well worth the long journey. Holding fish, sharks, 
an array of sea life, and full of adventure. Its legendary reputation is well deserved. Being able to join Bradley at this incredible location was an experience of a lifetime, which I would later write about for the New Zealand Bay Fisher magazine, showcasing Bradley's awesome fight and catch.